Hey guys. So this is the official video for um, all these standard users that want to use Pyrobit and you want to basically um, dabble and test the 4.6 beta version. Um, the I'll put the link to the installer. It basically goes on the um, Pyrobit repository and the releases and you'll see the Pyrobit version 4.6 beta in there that you can download the installer for. The installer looks like this, and then you obviously double click to install it on your machine. It might ask you to install the .NET um, Core 2 platform if you don't have it. It, went, it downloads it from the internet, make sure you're connected and everything else. It's fairly simple, um, except the license agreement. Um, pick a folder that you have write access to. It generally goes as the usual goes to the roaming. Uh, there are no options in this for uh, to install for all users or single users and whatnot. Um, just install it for yourself and uh, that'll come in in the, in the future updates of, to the installer. And then install the files. It'll go to, right now I'm installing everything to update uh, Pyrobit Master. So previously Pyrobit would install inside the Pyrobit folder. In this new installer, in the new method, because I'm using this folder mostly for the configurations and the um, cache files for the um, Revit and whatnot, uh, we'll I've modified the new installer to install Pyrobit outside of this folder, but it's still named Pyrobit dash with the, whatever the, um, the the branch it is on. Um, so this will install everything into Pyrobit master. As you saw that, it just showed up here. Um, as you can see, this is not a Git repository anymore. It's just installing from the, you don't have to be connected to the internet for the Pyrobit itself um, because it has .NET framework, um, uh, what is it? Um, prerequisites. Uh, you might need to be in, uh, connected to the internet to install those, but it's they're installed already on your machine. You don't really need the, you don't need to be, um, access to the internet. The uh, setup size is about 35, 34, uh, 6 megabytes, and it includes the um, full Pyrobit base inside it already. Um, Pyrobit uh, is installed, done, everything's configured. Um, there are a couple of, just uh, to show you um, how the Pyrobit basically uh, file system works. There's a bin that has the Pyrobit CLI and all the libraries and everything else inside it. There's an extension that has the Pyrobit standard extensions. Um, some of you, if you have played with this um, directories and stuff like that, you notice that there's no um, Pyrobit dev anymore because that's generally for development. I don't want to distribute it to all of you that are not really using it and take space on your on your hard drives. Um, there is uh, there has been some changes to the how the extensions work and stuff like that, but that's for the um, for the developers mostly. Um, I'll do a complete video on that. Take a look at it and see if you're interested and whatnot. The Pyrobit library is, uh, is here. A lot of the stuff has been cleaned up from this um, Pyrobit library. The side packages are all the um, all the R and Python. Um, standard libraries that come with it. And then the private file that um, defines all the engines and everything else and the private arguments that um, define what kind of installation you have uh, in this folder. But this is just for your information. You don't really have to worry about this stuff. Um, I'm going to launch Revit right now. And uh, I would probably will not get that notification because I've uh, tested this installation on my machine a couple of times. But basically the Pyrobit uh, loader is signed. So when you launch Revit, you get a um, window like this that basically tells you the Pyrobit loader, the publisher is me, and it's signed and everything else. You can just say always, always load. So I'm waiting. Okay, so you see the standard Pyrobit load. Um, window and um, to talk about a couple of things I've added the username to the load window and also if there is a oh it went away because we had um, we had this here okay and let me actually actually open the model that I wanted to test with So, so yeah, let me actually do a reload in here, go to settings, so we can talk about that window a little. And then in private core, disable this 10 second, and then do a reload. Okay, so yeah, um, you might have noticed that the emojis have changed, the emojis have been updated, and I've changed the emoji engine to um, basically be a lot more 
um, be a lot, a lot faster. And also it shows you the um, sub version on the Revit that you're using if the sub version is uh, for provided. So there's a little bit of more, in, uh, more information in here. Most of you disable this, disables this. Um, so I'm not sure if this is something that you would be um, interested to have on or not, but basically this is also, um, there's a little more information in this window. Now, um, some of you have noticed that the window output has changed. Um, the, I'm using the uh, sort of like a metro style window for, you know, just clarity and simplify, simplify window and stuff like that. But also because I wanted to add some functions and some information into this window um, that uh, helps me, helps you guys um, sort of like uh, save your output and uh, search in your output and stuff like that. And also um, a more robust output window. And whenever you send me screenshots of this output window, it has some information. Like for example, what Revit version, uh, what part of it version you're running on. It already um, is in the in the output window. Uh, so that's why I changed the, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, it's a much, much better output window now. Uh, so there is the one the exciting thing about it is that you can pin it on top now. So if you have this, you know, Revit, if you click on it, that window will go to the back. If you click on this and pin it and go back to a different application, the window stays on top. And there's also, if you click on it one more time, there's an auto collapse mode that you can, I don't know, place it here. And when you click on it, it auto collapses. And then when you click it back on, it, it'll, you know, it'll expand again. Um, and then one more click will turn that feature off. You can copy all the content of the output window to clipboard. You can save it to an HTML file. You can print it to a PDF or you know whatever the printer that you're using, or you could open it in your default browser. So in this example, I'm gonna use um, Chrome, obviously not, not Internet Explorer, but basically opens all that, um, all that to your output window. So here I can run a search for, I don't know, whatever, oops. Um, whatever word or term that you're interested in. I haven't implemented a search feature inside this because partly because I'm using, I'm still using the Internet Explorer engine inside it and it's not very, um, very robust in terms of like functionality and stuff like that. What's really good about it that I've been using for a while is that it gives me access to the document model to be able to update the content inside that. So it's, it works pretty well for the pirate output, output window. So that's, that's pretty much it about the output window. Um, there is a new, so when, whenever you install Pyrovid, Pyrovid installs and attaches to all the installed versions of Revit that you have on your machine using the 277, Iron Python 277 engine. Because that's the engine that Pyrovid is using, that's the engine is, that is the, uh, that uh, Revit Python shell is using if you're interested in that. Um, the rocket mode is um, uh, enabled by default. Um, the, there's a new section for engine selection and um, basically you can select your engine here. Um, this new version of Pyrovid comes with 278 and 279 RC1, which is a release candidate number one, if you want to dabble and play with those two. The default is 273 and the uh, 277, and the 273, which is the Dynamo, uh, provided for backward compatibility with Dynamo, it's still there, you can change it to 277. Um, save settings, you have to re close your Revit, restart it again to come up with the new engine, load with the new engine, basically but um, that version is also, there's no Dynamo compatibility mode anymore. You just pick the, you know, the different engine that is, um, is uh, compatible with Dynamo. So that's there. And then um, let's see. So the couple of updates, this 4.6 has been, um, a lot of the work that I've done in this was to basically make the distribution of Pyrovid a lot easier, make it simplify the installation so it's a lot smaller on your machines. Like previously, if you installed Pyrovid, you would notice that it's probably around um, 600 megabytes. Now the Pyrovid installation, Pyrovid Master, is about nine, 100 megabyte on your disk. So it's about a sixth of that. And it doesn't include the Git repository. It's much simpler. It just has all the stuff that you need and you know it's more robust than everything else. The extensions are still available. You don't see the dev or the um, or the core tools in here anymore, but you can disable. You can still disable the Pyrovid standard tools if you don't want to, and you can install all the other um, extensions in there. The Pyrovid tutor is still in there if you're following the videos um, to learn about Pyrovid and whatnot. And then inside settings, um, there really hasn't much changed inside the settings. Um, it the main change was that the Dynamo mode is gone, and then this activate engine that is uh, available here. Um, the sheet selection. Uh, window, let's say, um, let's do this and then say, 
revision. The sheet selection standard we know now has a sheet set um, drop down. So if you want to, if any of these tools ask you to which you know select a bunch of sheets, you can change the sheet set uh, also to list the sheets in that sheet set only to help with the selection. Um, that simplifies things if you have a bunch of sheet sets already. Like if you want to apply a new revision to a set of sheets and you want to only apply to sh um, sheets that have already added to a sheet set, that's there. Uh, the um, the export schedule, so schedules export tool has been updated to have a window and everything else. It looks a lot better. You can select the schedules from here uh, in a window instead of like, you know, act being actually have to uh, select the, um, what is it, a schedule window. Um, so there's a, it's, uh, under inspect, there is a uh, find monitored Revit link. Um, if there's a um, element that's monitoring another Revit element, you can select it and find the what Revit element it's it's monitoring basically. So that's the tool is there. Uh, we talked about the adding the sheet set to the sheet selector. Um, oh, the revised sheet set, the create revised sheet set, this tool uh, will notify you about the empty sheets. Uh, just so you know, it tells you that these sheets don't have any content on them, just to make sure, because a lot of times we add these sheets as temporary placeholders for other stuff. So it gives you a notification about that. Uh, there's a shift tab in search window, so if Pyro is using private search, you can shift tab to go back to the uh, you know previous uh, searches and whatnot. And uh, there's a direct shape tool, so um, I think it is, yeah, it's convert ACIS solid to freeform. If you have any of um, families that's called that's an ACIS solid, you can turn it into direct shape, freeform direct shape, and convert it using this tool. Uh, it basically works inside families because that's the ACS solids is generally inside families. So if you have a cat solid that you have brought it in, you can convert it into a Revit uh, direct shape that way. And then um, list point clouds to the list tool. So the spy list elements now has um, a point cloud instance that lists all the point classes in the model. Now, obviously, I don't have anything in there. But that's basically it. There's a new tool also here that's called the batch import path files that I've done a separate video on it. You can batch import all the path files and whatnot. Um, I'm planning to update the video on the make pattern uh, because quite a lot has changed in that tool over the time. And that video that we have is uh, a little bit old. So um, I'll update that tool. But basically, that's everything around the Pirate 4.6 that's been updated for, um, for the general use. There's a lot of changes in the back end for the core developers. Um, and um, the reason that I'd, I really needed to spend this time on updating all the core features and the distribution model and the installers and everything else and create a pirate CLI and, and whatnot. Uh, because just to make sure that the pirate, it gets easier to you guys and then you can keep it updated and stuff like that. Um, and then from then on, I can start like, you know, adding more tools and whatnot and no, not worry about like people not being able to update their pirates and, and stuff like this. So to uninstall pirate, obviously you would go to control panel, um, Pyruvit uh, program files and then search for Pyruvit and it can uninstall Pyruvit from here. Um, the Pyruvit uh, installed basically, um, um, the Pyruvit that you install on your machine comes with a, um, the, a tool that's called the Pyruvit CLI. I've done a separate video on this. If you're interested in, take a look at this. It comes with its own separate installer. If you have already uh, downloaded and installed Pyruvit on your machine, this is the video for it. You don't have to this install the Pyruvit CLI. Um, as a separate installer, you don't really have to. It comes shipped with your um, Pyruvit that you have already installed on your machine. So if I go to that um, Pyruvit master folder under bin, this Pyruvit.exe is the Pyruvit CLI tool that's there. So it's already shipped with your uh, with your installation. So uh, the only thing, well, I'm just going to show you basically what the Pyruvit CLI is, and you can watch that video and um, see all the features and whatnot. But basically, you can. Um, you can type higher a bit, and it would give you this tool, give you access to this tool that's managed to, uh, that is an, an environment to basically manage all the different uh, Pyruvit installations, configure them differently, install different extensions and everything else around Pyruvit. It's a very robust, hopefully it'll be a very robust tool. Um, it has a lot of features right now, but you know, a lot of them hasn't, haven't been fully tested, but um, uh, it's a very, very good, um, very good tool for maintaining part of it in your development environment and your team environments if you were ever interested in it. Um, for example, I can see if I see part of it clones, it tells me that there's a master clone deployed based on base and that's the directory that's sitting on. And if I'd say part of it attached, 
I can see that the Pyrovid using the master clone and the engine 277 is attached to my Revit 2018.3.1 and the um, 2014 update release 23 that I have on this machine. Um, I've actually don't have this 2014 it's just faked it inside um, inside the registry to you know to basically for testing and whatnot. But um, basically, this is these are some of the features, some of the very feature uh, um, quick introduction to that tool. And you can say Pyrovid environment and it basically lists everything in that environment for you, what kind of Revit versions you have installed and whatnot. Um, if you want to see what Revit versions you have installed on your machine, you can also use the Pyrovid tool and you can say Pyrovid Revits and then say installed and it would list what kind of Revits you have installed on your, on your machine or you can um, use it, just say Pyrovid Revits and it would list all the running instances of Revit and you can um, do a kill all if you ever wanted to close all the Revit instances on your machine. So there's a, there's a very powerful tool. It comes pre-packaged pre with your installer uh, in the in with your um, Pyrovid. Actually, the installer uses this tool to configure the Pyrovid on your machine and attach it to the different Revit versions and stuff like that. So it's a very integral part of the Pyrovid distributions from now on. That's pretty much it for the 4.6.1 um, beta as far as the base um, tools go. And uh, in the next video, I'll explain all the core changes that have been done inside Pyrovid, the breaking API changes uh, for you to update your tools and stuff like that. And, um, and that's it basically.